Chapter Eight of the Holy War. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Holy War by John Bunyan. Chapter Eight. Now, when the time was come and the court set, commandment was sent to Mister Trueman, the jailer, to bring the prisoners down to the bar. Then were the prisoners brought down, pinioned and chained together, as the custom of the town of Mansoul was. So, when they were presented before the Lord Mayor, the Recorder, and the rest of the Honourable Bench, first the jury was impanelled, and then the witnesses sworn. The names of the jury were these, Mr. Belief, Mr. True Heart, Mr. Upright, Mr. Hate Bad, Mr. Love God, Mr. See Truth, Mr. Heavenly Mind, Mr. Moderate, Mr. Thankful, Mr. Good Work, Mr. Zeal for God, and Mr. Humble. The names of the witnesses were Mr. Know All, Mr. Tell True, Mr. Hate Lies, with my Lord Will be Will and his man, if need were. So the prisoners were set to the bar. Then said Mr. Do Right, for he was the town clerk, Set atheism to the bar, jailer. So he was set to the bar. Then said the clerk, Atheism, hold up thy hand. Thou art here indicted by the name of Atheism, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou hast perniciously and doltishly taught and maintained that there is no God, and so no heed to be taken to religion. This thou hast done against the being, honour, and glory of the king, and against the peace and safety of the town of Mansoul. What sayest thou? Art thou guilty of this indictment, or not? Atheism. Not guilty. Crier. Call Mr. Know-all, Mr. Tell-true, and Mr. Hate-lies into the court. So they were called, and they appeared. Then said the clerk, You, the witnesses for the king, look upon the prisoner at the bar. Do you know him? Then said Mr. Know-all, Yes, my lord, we know him. His name is Atheism. He has been a very pestilent fellow for many years in the miserable town of Mansoul. Clerk. You are sure you know him? No. Know him? Yes, my lord, I have heretofore too often been in his company to be at this time ignorant of him. He is a Diabolonian, the son of a Diabolonian. I knew his grandfather and his father. Clerk. Well said, he standeth here indicted by the name of atheism, etc., and is charged that he hath maintained and taught that there is no God, and so no heed need be taken to any religion. What say you, the king's witnesses, to this? Is he guilty or not? No. My lord, I and he were once in villain's lane together, and he at that time did briskly talk of diverse opinions. And then and there I heard him say that, for his part, he did believe that there was no God. But, said he, I can profess one, and be as religious too, if the company I am in, and the circumstances of other things, said he, shall put me upon it. Clerk, you are sure you heard him say thus? No. Upon mine oath I heard him say thus. Then said the clerk, Mr. Telltrue, what say you to the king's judges touching the prisoner at the bar? Tell. My lord, I formerly was a great companion of his, for the which I now repent me, and I have often heard him say, and that with very great stomachfulness, that he believed there was neither God, angel, nor spirit. Clerk. Where did you hear him say so? Tell. In Black Mouth Lane and in Blasphemer's Row, and in many other places besides. Clerk. Have you much knowledge of him? Tell. I know him to be a Diabolonian, the son of a Diabolonian, and a horrible man to deny a deity. His father's name was never be good, and he had more children than this atheism. I have no more to say. Clerk. Mr. Hate lies. look upon the prisoner at the bar. Do you know him? Hate. 
"'My lord, this atheism is one of the vilest wretches "'that ever I came near or had to do with in my life. "'I have heard him say that there is no God. "'I have heard him say that there is no world to come, "'no sin nor punishment hereafter. "'And, moreover, I have heard him say "'that it was as good to go to a whorehouse "'as to go to hear a sermon.' Clerk, where did you hear him say these things? Hate, in Drunkard's Row, just at Rascal's Lane End, at a house in which Mr. Impiety lived. Clerk, set him by, jailer, and set Mr. Lustings to the bar. Mr. Lustings, thou art here indicted by the name of Lustings, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou hast devilishly and traitorously taught by practice and filthy words, that it is lawful and profitable to a man to give way to his carnal desires, and that thou, for thy part, hast not, nor never wilt, deny thyself of any sinful delight, as long as thy name is lustings. How sayest thou, art thou guilty of this indictment or not? Then said Mr. Lustings, My lord, I am a man of high birth, and have been used to pleasures and pastimes of greatness. I have not been wont to be snubbed for my doings, but have been left to follow my will as if it were law. And it seems strange to me that I should this day be called into question for that, that not only I, but almost all men, do either secretly or openly countenance, love, and approve of. Clerk. Sir, we concern not ourselves with your greatness, though the higher the better you should have been. But we are concerned, and so are you now, about an indictment preferred against you. How say you? Are you guilty of it, or not? Lust. Not guilty. Clerk. Crier, call upon the witnesses to stand forth and give their evidence. Crier. Gentlemen, you, the witnesses for the king, come in and give your evidence for our lord the king against the prisoner at the bar. Clerk, come, Mr. Noel, look upon the prisoner at the bar. Do you know him? No. Yes, my lord, I know him. Clerk, what is his name? No. His name is Lustings. He was the son of one beastly, and his mother bare him in Flesh Street. She was one evil concupiscence's daughter. I knew all the generation of them. Clerk, well said. You have heard his indictment. What say you to it? Is he guilty of the things charged against him, or not? No. My lord, he has, as he saith, been a great man indeed, and greater in wickedness than by pedigree, more than a thousandfold. Clerk. But what do you know of his particular actions, and especially with reference to his indictment? No. I know him to be a swearer, a liar, a Sabbath-breaker. I know him to be a fornicator and an unclean person. I know him to be guilty of abundance of evils. He has been, to my knowledge, a very filthy man. Clerk. But where did he use to commit his wickedness? In some private corners, or more open and shamelessly? No. All the town over, my lord. Clerk. Come, Mr. Teltrue, what have you to say for our lord the king against the prisoner at the bar? Tell. My lord, all that the first witness has said I know to be true, and a great deal more besides. Clerk. Mr. Lustings, do you hear what these gentlemen say? Lust. I was ever of opinion that the happiest life that a man could live on earth was to keep himself back from nothing that he desired in the world. Nor have I been false at any time to this opinion of mine, but have lived in the love of my notions all my days. Nor was I ever so churlish, having found such sweetness in them myself, as to keep the commendations of them from others. Then said the court, There hath proceeded enough from his own mouth to lay him open to condemnation. Wherefore set him by, jailer, and set Mr. Incredulity to the bar. Incredulity set to the bar. Clerk, Mr. Incredulity, thou art here indicted by the name of Incredulity, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou hast feloniously and wickedly, 
and that when thou wert an officer in the town of Mansoul, made head against the captains of the great king Shaddai, when they came and demanded possession of Mansoul. Yea, thou didst bid defiance to the name, forces, and cause of the king, and didst also, as did Diabolus thy captain, stir up and encourage the town of Mansoul to make head against and resist the said force of the king. What sayest thou to this indictment? Art thou guilty of it, or not? Then said incredulity, I know not should I. I love my old prince. I thought it my duty to be true to my old prince. I thought it my duty to be true to my trust, and to do what I could to possess the minds of the men of Mansoul, to do their utmost to resist strangers and foreigners, and with might to fight against them. Nor have I, nor shall I, change mine opinion for fear of trouble, though you at present are possessed of place and power. Then said the court, The man, as you see, is incorrigible. He is for maintaining his villainies by stoutness of words, and his rebellion with impudent confidence. And therefore set him by jailer, and set Mr. Forget-Good to the bar. Forget-Good set to the bar. Clerk. Mr. Forget-Good, thou art here indicted by the name of Forget-Good, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou, when the whole affairs of the town of Mansoul were in thy hand, didst utterly forget to serve them in what was good, and didst fall in with the tyrant Diabolus against Shaddai the king, against his captains and all his host, to the dishonour of Shaddai, the breach of his law, and the endangering of the destruction of the famous town of Mansoul. What sayest thou to this indictment? Art thou guilty, or not guilty? Then said Forget-Good, Gentlemen, and at this time my judges, as to the indictment by which I stand of several crimes accused before you, pray attribute my forgetfulness to mine age, and not to my willfulness, to the craziness of my brain, and not to the carelessness of my mind. And then I hope I may be by your charity excused from great punishment, though I be guilty. Then said the court, Forget good, forget good. Thy forgetfulness of good was not simply of frailty, but of purpose, and for that thou didst loathe to keep virtuous things in thy mind. What was bad thou couldst retain, but what was good thou couldst not abide to think of. Thy age, therefore, and thy pretended craziness, thou makest use of to blind the court withal, and as a cloak to cover thy knavery. But let us hear what the witnesses have to say for the king against the prisoner at the bar. Is he guilty of this indictment, or not? 8. My lord, I have heard this forget-good say, that he could never abide to think of goodness, no, not for a quarter of an hour. Clerk. Where did you hear him say so? 8. In all Bay Slane, at a house next door to the sign of the conscience seared with a hot iron. Clerk. Mr. Noel, what can you say for our lord the king against the prisoner at the bar? No. My lord, I know this man well. He is a Diabolonian, the son of a Diabolonian. His father's name was Love Nought, and for him I have often heard him say, that he counted the very thoughts of goodness the most burdensome thing in the world. Clerk, where have you heard him say these words? No, in Flesh Lane, right opposite to the church. Then said the clerk, Come, Mr. Teltrew, give in your evidence concerning the prisoner at the bar, about that for which he stands here, as you see, indicted by this honourable court. Tell, my lord, I have heard him often say he had rather think of the vilest thing than of what is contained in the Holy Scriptures. Clerk, where did you hear him say such grievous words? Tell, where? In a great many places, particularly in Nausea Street, in the house of one shameless, and in Filth Lane, at the sign of the reprobate, next door to the descent into the pit. Court. Gentlemen, you have heard the indictment, his plea, and the testimony of the witnesses. Jailer, set Mr. Hardhart to the bar. He is set to the bar. Clerk, Mr. Hardhart, 
Thou art here indicted by the name of hard heart, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou didst most desperately and wickedly possess the town of Mansoul with impenitency and obdurateness, and didst keep them from remorse and sorrow for their evils all the time of their apostasy from and rebellion against the blessed king should I. What sayest thou to this indictment? Art thou guilty or not guilty? Hard. My lord, I never knew what remorse or sorrow meant in all my life. I am impenetrable. I care for no man, nor can I be pierced with men's griefs. Their groans will not enter into my heart. Whomsoever I mischief, Whomsoever I wrong, to me it is music, when to others mourning. Court. You see the man is a right Diabolonian, and has convicted himself. Set him by, jailer, and set Mr. False Peace to the bar. False Peace set to the bar. Mr. False Peace, thou art here indicted by the name of False Peace, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul for that thou didst most wickedly and satanically bring, hold, and keep the town of Mansoul, both in her apostasy and in her hellish rebellion, in a false, groundless, and dangerous peace, and damnable security, to the dishonour of the king, the transgression of his law, and the great damage of the town of Mansoul. What sayest thou? Art thou guilty of this indictment, or not? Then said Mr. Falsepeace, Gentlemen, and you now appointed to be my judges, I acknowledge that my name is Mr. Peace, but that my name is False Peace I utterly deny. If your honours shall please to send for any that do intimately know me, or for the midwife that laid my mother of me, or for the gossips that were at my christening, they will, any or all of them, prove that my name is not False Peace, but Peace. Wherefore I cannot plead to this indictment, for as much as my name is not inserted therein, and as is my true name, so are also my conditions. I was always a man that loved to live at quiet, and what I loved myself, that I thought others might love also. Wherefore when I saw any of my neighbours to labour under a disquieted mind, I endeavoured to help them what I could, and instances of this good temper of mine many I could give as, one, when at the beginning our town of Mansoul did decline the ways of Shaddai, they, some of them, afterwards began to have disquieting reflections upon themselves what they had done. But I, as one troubled to see them disquieted, presently sought out means to get them quiet again. Two, when the ways of the old world and of Sodom were in fashion, if anything happened to molest those that were for the customs of the present times, I laboured to make them quiet again, and to cause them to act without molestation. 3. To come nearer home, when the wars fell out between Shaddai and Diabolus, if at any time I saw any of the town of Mansoul afraid of destruction, I often used, by some way, device, invention, or other, to labour to bring them to peace again. Wherefore, since I have been always a man of so virtuous a temper as some say a peacemaker is, and if a peace-baker be so deserving a man as some have been bold to attest he is, then let me, gentlemen, be accounted by you, who have a great name for justice and equity in man's soul, for a man that deserveth not this inhuman way of treatment, but liberty, and also a license to seek damage of those that have been my accusers. Then said the clerk, Crier, make a proclamation. Crier, Oh, yes! For as much as the prisoner at the bar hath denied his name to be that which is mentioned in this indictment, the court requireth that if there be any in this place that can give information to the court of the original and right name of the prisoner, they would come forth and give in their evidence, for the prisoner stands upon his own innocency. Then came two into the court, and desired that they might have leave to speak what they knew concerning the prisoner at the bar. The name of the one was Search Truth, and the name of the other Vouch Truth. So the court demanded of these men if they knew the prisoner, and what they could say concerning him. For he stands, said they, upon his own vindication. Then said Mr. Search Truth, My lord, I... Court. 
Hold, give him his oath. Then they swear him. So he proceeded. Search. My lord, I know and have known this man from a child, and can attest that his name is False Peace. I know his father. His name was Mr. Flatter, and his mother, before she was married, was called by the name of Mrs. Suthup. And these two, when they came together, lived not long without this son, and when he was born, they called his name False Peace. I was his playfellow, only I was somewhat older than he, and when his mother did used to call him home from his play, she used to say, False Peace, False Peace, come home quick or I'll fetch you. Yea, I knew him when he sucked, and though I was then but little, yet I can remember that when his mother did used to sit at the door with him, or did play with him in her arms, she would call him twenty times together, My little false peace, my pretty false peace, and, Oh, my sweet rogue, false peace, and again, Oh, my little bird, false peace, and, How do I love my child? The gossips also know it is thus, though he has had the face to deny it in open court. Then Mr. Vouchtruth was called upon to speak what he knew of him, so they swear him in. Then said Mr. Vouchtruth, My lord, all that the former witness hath said is true. His name is False Peace, the son of Mr. Flatter, and of Mrs. Suthup, his mother, and I have in former times seen him angry with those that have called him anything else but False Peace, for he would say that all such did mock and nickname him. But this was in the time when Mr. False Peace was a great man, and when the Diabolonians were the brave men in man's soul. Court. Gentlemen, you have heard what these two men have sworn against the prisoner at the bar. And now, Mr. False Peace, to you. You have denied your name to be False Peace, yet you see that these honest men have sworn that that is your name. As to your plea, in that you are quite besides the matter of your indictment, you are not by it charged for evil doing because you are a man of peace, or a peacemaker among your neighbours, but for that you did wickedly and satanically bring, keep, and hold the town of Mansoul, both under its apostasy from, and in its rebellion against its king, in a false, lying, and damnable peace, contrary to the law of Shaddai, and to the hazard of the destruction of the then miserable town of Mansoul. All that you have pleaded for yourself is, that you have denied your name, etc. But here, you see, we have witnesses to prove that you are the man. For the peace that you so much boast of making among your neighbours, know that peace that is not a companion of truth and holiness, but that which is without this foundation, is grounded upon a lie, and is both deceitful and damnable, as also the great Shaddai hath said. Thy plea, therefore, has not delivered thee from what by thy indictment thou art charged with, but rather it doth fasten all upon thee. But thou shalt have very fair play. Let us call the witnesses that are to testify as to matter of fact, and see what they have to say for our lord the king against the prisoner at the bar. Clerk. Mr. Knowall, what say you for our lord the king against the prisoner at the bar? No. My lord, this man hath of a long time made it, to my knowledge, his business to keep the town of man's soul in a sinful quietness in the midst of all her lewdness, filthiness, and turmoils, and hath said, and that in my hearing, Come, come, let us fly from all trouble, on what ground soever it comes, and let us be for a quiet and peaceable life, though it wanteth a good foundation. Clerk. Come, Mr. Hate Lies, what have you to say? Hate. My lord, I have heard him say that peace, though in a way of unrighteousness, is better than trouble with truth. Clerk. Where did you hear him say this? Hate. I heard him say it in Folly Yard, at the house of one Mr. Simple, next door to the sign of the self-deceiver. Yea, he hath said this to my knowledge twenty times in that place. Clerk. We may spare further witness. This evidence is plain and full. Set him by, jailer, and set Mr. No-Truth to the bar. Mr. No-Truth, thou art here indicted by the name of No-Truth, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou hast always, to the dishonour of Shaddai, 
and the endangering of the utter ruin of the famous town of Mansoul, set thyself to deface and utterly to spoil all the remainders of the law and image of Shaddai that had been found in Mansoul after her deep apostasy from her king to Diabolus, the envious tyrant. What sayest thou? Art thou guilty of this indictment, or not? No. Not guilty, my lord. Then the witnesses were called, and Mr. Knowall did first give in his evidence against him. No. My lord, this man was at the pulling down of the image of Shaddai. Yea, this is he that did it with his own hands. I myself stood by and saw him do it, and he did it at the commandment of Diabolus. Yea, this Mr. No-Truth did more than this. He did also set up the horned image of the beast Diabolus in the same place. This also is he that at the bidding of Diabolus did rend and tear and cause to be consumed all that he could of the remainders of the law of the king, even whatever he could lay his hands on in man's soul. Clerk, who saw him do this besides yourself? Hate. I did, my lord, and so did many more besides, for this was not done by stealth or in a corner, but in the open view of all. Yea, he chose himself to do it publicly, for he delighted in the doing of it. Clerk. Mr. No-Truth, how could you have the face to plead not guilty, when you were so manifestly the doer of all this wickedness? No. Sir, I thought I must say something, and as my name is, so I speak. I have been advantaged thereby before now, and did not know but by speaking no truth, I might have reaped the same benefit now. Clerk. Set him by, jailer, and set Mr. Pitiless to the bar. Mr. Pitiless, thou art here indicted by the name of Pitiless, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou didst most traitorously and wickedly shut up all bowels of compassion, and wouldst not suffer poor Mansoul to condole her own misery when she had apostatized from her rightful king, but didst evade and at all times turn her mind awry from those thoughts that had them in a tendency to lead her to repentance. What says thou to this indictment, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty of pitilessness. All I did was to cheer up according to my name, for my name is not pitiless, but cheer up. I could not abide to see man's soul inclined to melancholy. Clerk. How do you deny your name, and say it is not pitiless, but cheer up? Call for the witnesses. What say you, the witnesses, to this plea? No. My lord, his name is pitiless, so he hath written himself in all papers of concern wherein he has had to do. But these Diabolonians love to counterfeit their names. Mr. Covetousness covers himself with the name of good husbandry, or the like. Mr. Pride can, when need is, call himself Mr. Neat, Mr. Handsome, or the like, and so of all the rest of them. Clerk. Mr. Teltrue, what say you? Tell. His name is Pitiless, my lord. I have known him from a child, and he hath done all that wickedness whereof he stands charged in the indictment. But there is a company of them that are not acquainted with the danger of damning. Therefore they call all those melancholy that have serious thoughts how that state should be shunned by them. Clerk. Set Mr. Haughty to the bar, jailer. Mr. Haughty, thou art here indicted by the name of Haughty, an intruder upon the town of Mansoul, for that thou didst most traitorously and devilishly teach the town of Mansoul to carry it loftily and stoutly against the summons that was given them by the captains of the king should I. Thou didst also teach the town of Mansoul to speak contemptuously and vilifyingly of their great king should I, and didst moreover encourage, both by words and examples, Mansoul to take up arms both against the king and his son Emmanuel. How sayest thou, art thou guilty of this indictment or not? Haughty. Gentlemen, I have always been a man of courage and valour, and have not used, when under the greatest clouds, to sneak or hang down the head like a bulrush. Nor did it at all at any time please me to see men veil their bonnets to those that have opposed them. Yea, though their adversaries seem to have ten times the advantage of them. I did not use to consider who was my foe, nor what the cause was in which I was engaged. It was enough to me if I carried it bravely, fought like a man, 
and came off a victor. Court. Mr. Haughty, you are not here indicted for that you have been a valiant man, nor for your courage and stoutness in times of distress, but for that you have made use of this your pretended valour to draw the town of Mansoul into acts of rebellion both against the great king and Emmanuel his son. This is the crime and the thing wherewith thou art charged in and by the indictment. But he made no answer to that. Now when the court had thus far proceeded against the prisoners at the bar, then they put them over to the verdict of their jury, to whom they did apply themselves after this manner. Gentlemen of the jury, you have been here and have seen these men. You have heard their indictments, their pleas, and what the witnesses have testified against them. Now what remains is that you do forthwith withdraw yourselves to some place, where without confusion you may consider of what verdict, in a way of truth and righteousness, you ought to bring in for the king against them, and so bring it in accordingly. Then the jury, to wit, Mr. Belief, Mr. Trueheart, Mr. Upright, Mr. Hatebad, Mr. Love God, Mr. See Truth, Mr. Heavenly Mind, Mr. Moderate, Mr. Thankful, Mr. Humble, Mr. Good Work, and Mr. Zeal for God, withdrew themselves in order to their work. Now when they were shut up by themselves, they fell to discourse among themselves in order to the drawing up of their verdict. And thus Mr. Belief, for he was the foreman, began. Gentlemen, quoth he, for the men, the prisoners at the bar, for my part I believe that they all deserve death. Very right, said Mr. Trueheart, I am wholly of your opinion. Oh, what a mercy is it, said Mr. Hatebad, that such villains as these are apprehended. Ay, ay, said Mr. Lovegod, this is one of the joyfulest days that ever I saw in my life. Then said Mr. Seatruth, I know that if we judge them to death, our verdict shall stand before Shaddai himself. Nor do I at all question it, said Mr. Heavenly Mind. He said, moreover, When all such beasts as these are cast out of man's soul, what a goodly town will it be then? Then, said Mr. Moderate, it is not my manner to pass my judgment with rashness, but for these their crimes are so notorious, and the witness so palpable, that that man must be wilfully blind who saith the prisoners ought not to die. Blessed be God, said Mr. Thankful, that the traitors are in safe custody. And I join with you in this upon my bare knees, said Mr. Humble. I am glad also, said Mr. Goodwork. Then said the warm man, and true-hearted Mr. Zeal for God, Cut them off! They have been the plague, and have sought the destruction of man's soul. Thus, therefore, being all agreed in their verdict, they come instantly into the court. Clerk. Gentlemen of the jury, answer all to your names. Mr. Belief, one. Mr. Trueheart, two. Mr. Upright, three. Mr. Hatebad, four. Mr. Love God, five. Mr. Sea Truth, six. Mr. Heavenly Mind, seven. Mr. Moderate, eight. Mr. Thankful, nine. Mr. Humble, 10, Mr. Goodwork, 11, and Mr. Zeal for God, 12. Good men and true, stand together in your verdict. Are you all agreed? Jury. Yes, my lord. Clerk. Who shall speak for you? Jury. Our foreman. Clerk. You, the gentlemen of the jury, being empanelled for our lord the king, to serve here in a matter of life and death, have heard the trials of each of these men, the prisoners at the bar. What say you? Are they guilty of that and those crimes for which they stand here indicted, or are they not guilty? Foreman. Guilty, my lord. Clerk. Look to your prisoners, jailer. This was done in the morning, and in the afternoon they received the sentence of death according to the law. The jailer, therefore, having received such a charge, put them all in the inward prison, to preserve them there till the day of execution, which was to be the next day in the morning. But now to see how it happened, one of the prisoners, incredulity by name, in the interim betwixt the sentence and the time of execution, brake prison and made his escape. 
and gets him away quite out of the town of Mansoul, and lay lurking in such places and holes as he might, until he should again have opportunity to do the town of Mansoul a mischief for their thus handling of him as they did. End of chapter 8